Welcome back to the friendly confines of the Cooper Road Mini R&D basement, as we like to call it. Um, I'm putting together the uh, alloy head, the Pierce head, for my own green 66 Mini Cooper S that we've shown in lots of our videos. I've talked at length about using early Subaru valve stem seals. I can show um, the reasons I like these. I've machined these guides down about 90 thousandths from the standard height of these Pierce heads. And you can just see a chamfer here where I've taken off enough so that I don't have a sharp corner. Now that matches, you can just walk over here and take a quick look here, the new valve stem seals. They're a metal cup with a rubber inside. They don't have that raised lip that rides in the groove of the guide. Here's one of the rubber seals. These are the standard ones, about a buck fifty. And there's not a whole lot of choice. Some of the MPI ones claim to be the Vuitton material. The problem here is people who run, especially these Pierce heads, and one and a half ratio rocker arms end up with valve lifts, even with a mildish street cam, in the four. 425, 435 range sometimes. And these install at about 1.41. And that's the mystery of why you find these little springs. Sneak over to my other tray here. These little springs lying inside your valve cover. I've had people say, what, what are those? They, where did those come from? Yeah. What happens is the underside of these retainers with the installed springs comes down and strikes the top of these rubber dealies here every time the valve opens and closes. And uh, you do that a hundred times a second and guess what happens to these little springs. So even for a fairly mild cam, this modification has worked. And I like these Subaru seals. Here's the part number here from my good friend Rich at Parts for Imports in Grass Valley. I'm sure they're available through all sorts of uh, outlets, but uh, there's no brand on here. But what these are for, you know, 80s, 90s, maybe even late 70s. I used to have a Subaru Brat from the 70s. Those little opposed four-cylinder 16 and 1800 engines, the early ones, used 7 millimeter valves and these seals. They're getting a little hard to find, but, you know, this stuff can be found dimensionally. Uh, I knew about these having had that little Subaru and thought, huh. And the idea is when I've machined down the guide enough, these things sit just low enough. I'm probably sitting maybe 20, 30, 40 thousandths lower, depending on the exact guide and head. But you can see the groove in the guides that governs where these rubbery style ones with this lip are gonna sit. They're gonna sit right in that groove, regardless of what you do to the top of the guide here. So these sit all the way down. Um, and I verified that, uh, you know, when you, when you open these valves, say 450, we're going to be good here. And that's probably more lift than most hot street engines are going to see. All right, here we go. Let me see if I can show one of these going together. Of course, we've got the, um, steel little shim looking spring seat down here on these alloy heads. Don't forget those or your spring will dig a big hole quickly. Uh, I mentioned the little tight-fitting rubber metal cup just presses on seated all the way down next goes the pair of springs these are the uh, C-AEA 526 mini spare springs I'm going lighter in this case I was using the very heavy ones thinking well I need that 10,000 rpm eh, you know the other 99% of the time then your engine is uh, dealing with tremendous spring loads on the cam and lifters and such. And in fact, that's the damage we found. Our cam and lifters were pretty knackered after, you know, hard usage, but relatively low miles. I've shown this trick before. It's just a, uh, I think it's a Chevrolet distributor clamp of sorts with a bolt going through it held in a drill press. You got leverage, leverage to put the heads together. Simple stuff. The very lightweight, uh, Titanium retainers. I've got a little block of wood that fits into the uh, combustion chamber nicely there. You can see here, I'm just going to use my left hand to sort of center the retainer as I apply pressure. Push this down enough to set the keeper in place. There's one. 
to their groove, like so. Release the drill press. And you can see. Let me back up here and show a wider view. And with a finger, any old drill press, this is just a cheapy Harbor Freight unit. And you can uh, compress that spring half an inch easily with a finger or two. Drop in one. Should fold straight in. There we go. Should actually drop itself in as I lower. Let's see if that shows it. One. Two. And release.